Wilson Morales from Black Women TV talking to Dee Smith, director of the film, the documentary Kokomo City. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you today? Good. You know, the thing with documentaries is that they don't always get as much attention as obviously feature films, you know, narrative stories. But with this, it's a different story. I always say, what are we getting that we haven't seen before? So when you set out to do a film, what was your, you know, there's never an end site when you start off because you don't know what you're going to get and then you have to work with your editing team as far as, okay, what do we have here? What was your goal when you set out to do this film? Wow, that's a very good point. Um, when you when you set out to do it, you 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 could kind of visualize things, but things are so everywhere. You're just trying to get through putting, you know, the film together. Um, but I wanted to really um, show that even for the trans community as well as the rest of the world, that you know, it, it's okay to kind of like you know let some of these walls down and talk to us and and release us from some of these fortresses that have been built around us to stopping us from communicating with the rest of the world particularly to the black community it's like i'm transgender and i don't even know what to say half the time to trans women that's weird to me you know is there's nothing really humanizing about that experience and so i wanted to just create a, a another space a place that felt real and genuine and tangible and life like you know full of life and and uh and relatability you know with this film um it was very important that the transparency of these women and even the vulnerability and how i shot it you know thank god you know i, I did the the editing the videography and and i mean the cinematography and directed i did everything the lighting so i didn't have all those hang-ups of waiting on people and around their time and what they could do and when they could do it and do it if they're visualizing it. So I was really blessed in, in the sense of having full range creative control and getting out, um, getting this film out the way I wanted it to. With the individuals that you interviewed, did you map out as far as what you wanted to get out? You certainly don't want to have four individuals telling the same story. You know, that's not, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah, no, so, so you want so it's like, you know, how long did it take before you said to yourself, okay, I can narrow it down to these four because the other individuals that I told, their story is similar to this one and so forth. Yeah. No, I started off with with the four girls. Um, it was very it was a very easy process uh in in casting them in terms of just like I I like what I saw. There's something, you know, at the end of the day, I was looking for star quality in the girls, whether it's the way that they speak or the tone in their voice or that, that glimmer in their eyes or their physique. You know, I wanted girls to kind of represent different spectrums of transgenderism. And um, and I, you know, um real quickly, repeat your question. I'm saying, what did you want? You know, you didn't you certainly don't want all four people telling yeah. the same story. Yeah, yeah, no. But, yeah, yeah. So, so I what I did was basically, um, before I actually filmed any of the girls, I had like, I guess you could say, interview. There were really conversations over the phone just to kind of get a sense of you know just intellectual uh, uh, knowledge and and how they speak and what 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 really made them passion passionate. And I also created questions where I asked all of them the same question separately, obviously, and saw how differently they act, they answered, even though there's a, like a, obviously a thread of just like agreement there. Um, but they all had different experiences to answer those questions. So, you know, I decided obviously not to bore people, underwhelming people with the same question, but I decided to ask this girl, that question, that girl, that question, me being the editor, I was able to kind of edit as I'm asking the questions you know I already knew how I wanted this to look and I definitely kind of encouraged and directed the girls each girl to where I wanted them to kind of hone in on you know which which I thought was um what felt natural to them as well you mentioned you wore a lot of hats were there any challenges obviously it's not easy trying to do everything by yourself <laughs> mm. No, it's not easy. You know, listen, I was going through a tough time when I was filming this. I didn't have my own place. I was sleeping on someone's couch. I had to borrow a car to, to go shoot B-roll, to go interview people. Like, you know, um, I was at the mercy of, of anyone in my life that believed in me or trusted me or, you know, loved me. Um, so, uh, but there honestly really wasn't a lot of, um, uh, 
I didn't have a lot of um, um, obstacles, honestly, just getting it done. I guess financially wise, that that kind of set me back a little bit, but I always kind of worked around it and found a way to, to make it happen as any creative person should do. Mm -hmm. You've obviously made lots of trans transitions in your life and you've gone from music to now filmmaking. You've gotten awards for this movie. You are now a filmmaker. Hopefully this is not a one and done. Where do you see yourself from this? You know, What's your takeaway from doing this movie to what you're going to do next in life. Sure. Well, I I am definitely obsessed with filmmaking. I have the bug, as they would say. Um, I'm already in early development of my next film. I'm working with some fabulous producers um, that's been doing it for quite some time. And uh, they've kind of like, you know, um, taken a liking to me and, and positioned themselves in my life where they're really teaching me and, and uh, huddling around me so that I could, survive you know but i i'm very excited i have about four projects on the table right now um i'm prioritizing where they those all fall and uh, you know yeah i'm here i'm i'm a, i am a filmmaker and i am definitely uh gonna bring some uh you know projects that i think people are gonna be gravitated to What's going to get people to watch Kokomo City? Obviously, you know, we're facing a lot in the market right now. I always say there's a glut. What I mean there's a glut means there's a lot of yeah. films, yeah. you know, there's a lot of projects on streaming channels. You know, it takes a lot for people to decide what they're going to see. Mm -hmm. What's going to get people to see Kokomo City that they can walk away with something? Obviously, yeah. we're being introduced to a whole new community for those who are not, you know, involved in this. This is not just for the trans community. This is for everybody. Uh, what do you want people to take away from going to see a movie and from what they get out of it. And I'm okay with what I'm gonna tell you. Um, you know, Magnolia might not be crazy about it, but you know, this is gonna be a word of mouth, grassroots, uh, mouth to ear thing, which is the best to me. Like this is that, that this is gonna create a fan base that's gonna be unbreakable. I think, I think that the, what's gonna set this apart is that the stories and the perspective is so real and it's absolutely urgent. You know, yes, this is a documentary, but I wanted to create it where it didn't look or feel like a documentary. Um, when people realize that it's not just about sex work, it's about us as black people and how a lot of our homophobia or transphobia or anger or resentment starts um, between each other. Um, I think that's very appealing to people. Like we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of, high budgeted film movies that are you know taking up a lot of the space right now but i think people are getting to the place where we do want to get back to feeling human and hearing humans be human on television and movies and documentaries and you know sometimes we need that that kind of like that that reset button and i think this is a reset button to to to, to connect in a different way um i think it's going to cut through quite well actually um but but again, it, it's it's a word of mouth thing, and you you're just not going to compete with that. When, once the culture really gets involved, it's going to just skyrocket. I I I definitely feel that way. The show, the film was shot a while back, obviously, and we know what happened to Coco. Uh, have you kept in touch with the other women? You know, just to see where they are and their well being. Oh yeah, I I see. Oh yeah, I talk to them all the time. I mean, we're doing a lot of promotion. Like they're, I just saw them last night. I'm going to see them again tonight. All of them, they look beautiful they're uh they're safe they're very inspired they're uh um they're positioned where they're meeting people um you know that have a lot of influence whether it's in film or just uh society social um uh platforms and things like that and i i'm i'm, I'm very grateful i just want to I'm just, I'm happy that in a lot of ways it created, and it's also creating opportunities for people that are in the film, but uh, the girls are fine. They're, they're all healthy and they look great. Mm -hmm. And yourself as well? No more couches, right? We're all good? <laughs> no more couches, even though I like a good a couch, you know, but- no, Nothing's wrong with a couch, you know? No, it's different when that's your only choice though, but yeah, yeah, things are definitely picking up. You know. Thanks. But hey, you know, you, you've been able to take this movie to different festivals. It's gotten the rewards and accolades. Congratulations on that. Obviously, this is a story that people should see, people should hear about. And like I said, you know, while there's a lot of big budgeted movies out there, you know, they got the marketing budget to keep talking about it. You know, like you said, it's all about grassroots and letting people know. And it's not about just sitting theaters. Long afterwards, you know, people can talk about this movie, whether it appears on, on TV or anywhere else. So keep it going. 
you know, you. we're here to support. Let's Thank see what you. you do next. I'm looking forward. Once I meet a new filmmaker, the next thing is like, okay, let's make sure you do something next. So that way it's not a long time in between. That's right. Oh, it's not. We're, we're going. We're ready to go. <laughs> right. Have yourself a great day. Thank you so much, Wilson. Bye.